It's that time again for another not so normal gaming podcast featuring your hosts, Mr. Techno Squeak. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Nostalgic Dan One. Everything I feel is in this sword. Good. Come on. And Quick Freeze Four. Don't worry. I'll handle the bad guys. This is a podcast you want to listen to, but first, you gotta press start. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Press Start Podcast. This is episode 92, and I am the best on this podcast, the best ever, Mr. Technosqueak. And we have two others that are as good. Maybe as good as me, maybe. Just a little. Nostalgic day one. You rock! Woohoo! Yeah. Do do? I'm hoping to be as good as you someday. <laughs> I'm really working <laughs> up to that. You know. Yeah, that's, that's good. That That's always good. Thanks for being an inspiration, Techno. <laughs> Quality role model. Yes. And our last host... Quick Freeze 4. You rock! Woohoo! How are you doing? I don't think I like this little self-promotion thing that you give yourself. Dude, I do it like every episode, though. <laughs> I I know, and every episode it just keeps, keeps, keeps getting better and better and more grand, and we we just can't top it yeah. anymore. We, we, can't we just can't. We can't keep up. Like, we, we might as well just quit the podcast and you just do it by yourself. Yeah, I mean, you're the best. You're, you're the right. best. You're the best. <laughs> you're the best. Kind of the best the there ever was. That's the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> he said it himself. He's the best. So, yeah. So, Dan, Dan and I are just going to go to Taco Bell. We'll be back in like an hour. You can handle this, right? Yeah, you got <laughs> I don't know. Just do, like, love talk for, like, yeah, two just, hours. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people would just want a podcast of just love talk. Oh, but but you, you are the best. Yeah, you're the best at everything. You're obviously the love guru, you know. The, the only thing that you can't do is beat an RPG in a reasonable time. Yeah, I'm the best at that. Yeah. <laughs> I got you beat there. Uh, okay, well. At least you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm doing good tech now. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Yes. Oh, I said, you said. You said, brought out the F word. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping the F word is like no tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But I have a question for you, Qu- Quick Freeze. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, it's too ooh! Dangerous. I <laughs> know. I'm afraid. <laughs> You're afraid. Yeah. How was Pax East? How was Pax East? Yeah. Was it boring? Yes. Actually, it was pretty. I thought it was pretty good, honestly. Um, there's a lot of things that weren't there though, which were a little disappointing. Um, if you guys n- may or may not know, uh. There was no sign of Nintendo, and there was no well. There was a, there was really no Sony booth there. Uh, the only Sony booth there was like a merch store, which was kind of disappointing. But really, there was no Nintendo or Sony there at all. Um, but uh, I don't know. It was good. It was mostly I enjoyed mostly the the indie section, like the indie games and the tabletop. And normally I don't go in there all too often. Um, Microsoft was there. They had a lot of games like uh, Plants vs. Zombies, the new one, um, Killer Instinct, and um, I actually, honestly, those were the only two games I kind of remember from the Xbox booth. So, um, but yeah, you know, you got like the other uh, big events. League of Legends was fucking huge there. You know, like always, I swear to God, like, 
they could just have their own convention and it would be just as popular as PAX East. Uh, but they had this cool new game uh, that's like League of Legends, uh, like a type, and that is uh, DC um, Infinite Crisis. And I think I might actually get into this game, not just because it's like superheroes, but... Um, Actually, yeah, mainly because it's like superheroes, but it, it looks just like League of Legends and stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I really might uh, pick this up. I'm not sure exactly when it comes out, but they had this huge, like, grand, like, not a tournament or like a more like an exhibition and just show you how to different play. They had commentators and everything about this DC game. I'm like, holy shit, this thing actually looks kind of badass. And they showed off a lot, a lot of different characters like uh, Nightmare Batman and like, um, let's see, Arcane Green Lantern. You know, like just different variations of all the different heroes and stuff. So, um, but yeah, that was cool. Um, but yeah, it was. It was good, but not as good as it could have been. You know, I don't. I still don't know why Nintendo didn't. I really wish Nintendo showed up because usually Nintendo is like the best, my favorite thing to go to, and it would have been perfect this year because you know with Mario Kart 8 coming out and the new Smash Bros coming out, I really don't know why they weren't there. But you know, you never know. But um. Yeah, I don't know. Do you guys want to know like certain things at PAX East, or like, do you have any questions about it, or did you pick up any swag or play any games? Actually, I picked up. Uh, I didn't really pick up that much free swag. The only free swag I got was there's a new like Wolfenstein game came out, and uh, so they gave out like, um, you know, kind of like um, like messenger bags, and uh, I didn't. I didn't even really have to, like, do anything. I was actually just kind of walking by, and this girl just kind of like, here you go. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Thing. And I just, like, continued on. I didn't even play the uh, the Wolfenstein game. But um, uh, they actually had a booth for The Evil Within, and I was, like, super excited about Evil Within. I was actually willing to wait in line for, like, two-plus two hours to play this game. But uh, I'm really glad I didn't because I found out it was just... Uh, you could go in and watch other people play, you know, like the developers and stuff. So I was like, okay, good thing I didn't waste my time on that. Um, I did get, a, a, like, inflatable axe, like a Viking axe from the new, uh, I'm not sure the full title. It's just like some Viking game, and I don't have the axe near me to tell you the whole game. But um, everything else I got was just, I bought, you know, I bought, like, a Persona 4 art book, which is, like, mm gorgeous. I was like, yeah. oh shit. Those art books are great. Yeah, I got that from the Udon booth. Yeah, right? Udon, oh my god, they do I killer love... art books. Oh uh, yeah, I absolutely love that's usually the first booth I go to when mm -hmm. uh, when I go to Paxi's because last year I didn't go to their booth till Sunday because I couldn't find them and they were all out of the good art books so I went there right away this year and I got an art book for, yeah, like I said, for the Persona 4 and uh, a few other ones for like animes I like, so um but yeah, it was cool. I got like, um, see, I got a, a little plushie of the the Space Marine from Doom. He's oh, that's like, cool. <laughs> he's like he's all like cute and like I don't know, awesome. badass at the same time. And um, and see, I got like this uh, field guide to the Kanto region. You know, like a Pokemon book. And um, like looking at the book, the, all the Pokemon are drawn as if they would appear in like real life, like if you actually saw them in the wild. And some of the images are like very disturbing, especially like Mewtwo and shit. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was cool. Um, some games I played. Uh, actually, there's two games I really wanted to talk to you guys about, and I'm like super, super excited about these two. And uh, they're both coming out for the PC and the Vita. Uh, later this year, and, like, no, I was just, I don't know why, they were just such good games. The first one is actually called, uh, Ni I'm gonna get this kind of weird, it's Ninja Sinkai, S-E-N-K-I-D-X, and basically what this is, is you play as, uh, like a little ninja, and the way you attack is you throw out, like, uh, shurikens or ninja stars as your, as your main attack, and, Kind of like the best way to describe this game is a Mega Man Oh, style. I played this game. I played the original Did version you? back in the day. Yeah, I loved it. It was great. I, 
I fucking played this thing at PAX. I'm like, I am fucking buying this game day one it comes out. And it, it, like I said, it plays just like Mega Man. And um, it was fantastic. I can't really... It's kind of hard to describe, but, except saying like it's a Mega Man style ninja yeah. game. So oh. um, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the one thing it did have that Mega Man games usually don't have is the character can do a, like a double jump. You know, like in midair. So I thought that was kind of neat. And um, it, at the, the same booth, there was this other game, and this one's kind of like a uh, best way to describe it is kind of like a eight bit, but more like the graphics were kind of like leaning toward like the Nintendo, uh, the Atari side. But uh, I would say eight bit graphics. And basically, this is a um, kind of like a survival. You know. You fight waves and waves of monsters as they come in, and this game is called uh, Cur- uh, Curses and Chaos, and basically it's one or two players, and basically that's what you do is like wave one, and you monsters will come in like ghosts, goblins, skeletons, you know, different various creatures, and you just beat the shit out of them, you know, like, either one or two hits will will kill them, and really, your only purpose of the game is just to su- see how long you can survive, and the guy was telling, um, the guy was telling me and Pete Dora, I was actually playing it with him, uh, that usually people, like, last to, like, wave, like, f- four or five, we made it up to nine, so, <laughs> so we are kind of, like, proud of ourselves, so, yeah, both these games are coming out for the PC and the Vita la- later this year, and I'm super excited for both. I'm downloading them day one. They were just, like, so well-designed, and I love the 8-bit graphics for both of them. So, um, Another one I really got to try out, and last year I played it on the console, uh, but this year I played it on the 3DS, and I really liked it on the 3DS because this is what I plan on buying it for, is Shovel Knight. And oh my god, I, yeah, I want Shovel Knight I know, so bad. Yeah. Super, super excited about Shovel Knight. So I was, was like, it's so well designed. The 3D in it on the 3DS, the 3D looks fucking amazing. And I was talking to the guy, and I was asking him like, well, when does this game come out? And basically, he couldn't give me an exact date because, um, you know, like they don't want to give you an exact date, and then if something you know happens, you know. It'll make him look bad. But basically, he was telling everyone who asked him is that um, they submitted the game to, like, Nintendo and other various uh, places like that, and it's in, like, review or something. So it's coming out, like, very, very soon. He said sometimes uh, closer to the fall. So um, if he if it comes out sooner than that, he didn't really know, per se. But he, the way he was talking uh, sounded like it's just, it's, like, right around the corner. Like, you know next month, next two months, or something like that. He was, like, very, very sure it'll come out, like, before, you know, the fall. So, hopefully, I'm right, and, you know, that's what I got from the guy. But, yeah, it was just it was just super, super cool. And um, I'm trying to think what else games I played uh, that I really, really enjoyed. I didn't really play much. I just kind of, like, walked around and just enjoyed things. And, I like, I took a lot of pictures of cosplayers, I immediately put them up on my Facebook uh, page, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that much to say. Magic was huge this year. They they were announcing uh, Magic: The Gathering 2015 like a special set, and that was huge. Like it almost took up like I don't know. I want to say like two thirds of the tabletop area. Um, they had a new game called the new Borderlands game, uh, the the oh, pre yeah. the pre sequel that was there. It wasn't playable, or at least I don't think it was. But it was they had a huge huge booth there. Um, oh, Ultimate uh, Street Fighter Four was there. I didn't get to play this because they were mostly during tournament doing tournaments there. But the game looks fucking. Amazing, just like you know the past Street Fighter Four games, and I spent a lot of my time on Sunday watching like exhibition and tournament matches. It was cool. I actually met Combo Fiend. I went like right up to him. <clears throat> Excuse me. I went like right up to him and I said, "Hey man, are you like Combo Fiend?" And he said, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Oh, dude, it's so cool." Like, I watch your matches every year on Evo, and he's just like, "Oh, cool, man. Thanks a lot." And I didn't know he worked at Capcom. 
Uh, I mean, uh, he works at Capcom now, so, like, he was telling me, like, yeah, he he can't play it evil anymore because of that reason, which makes sense since he's working on the game now. But uh, it was just so cool. And, um, yeah, so I got to meet him. And I guess the other huge game that was there was Wildstar. Um, I'm not sure how to, like, kind of describe this game. I want to say it's, like, um, like a PvP... A uh, massive multi you know, online game, um, but it was huge there. I, like, I didn't play it. I can't really, I can't find the words to describe this game. But all I know is like, it was one of the big ones there, just like uh, League of Legends and um, the DC Infinite Crisis. Um, trying to think what else was there really quick before I start rambling on. Um, I think that's. Kind of for all like the major games. Uh, I did go a few to a few concerts there. Uh, they had this group called the Double Clicks. Uh, they had the it was basically it's this group of two sisters and um, they sing like different songs about like nerd culture. Like one of their songs was about like D and D, and the other song was about um, uh, you know the guy who yells "Free Bird." And um, they were very very hilarious on stage. But when I bought their CD, uh, not to not. Not really that funny. I think they were better live. Uh, Amagataguchi was there. <clears throat> they were fucking fantastic. Oh, I uh, love them. They're so good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, the crowd was just jumping up and down. And, like, me being, like, an extremely short guy, um, yeah, I almost got fucking jumped on, like, so many times. But, uh, yeah, they were amazing. Uh, another group um, that I really liked, and I'd never heard of them before, was uh, this group called Bit Brigade, and basically what they did is one guy, uh, he got on stage and basically he played the start to finish the entire run of The Legend of Zelda on the NES, the very first one, and while he did that, the band played the music for like each dungeon, each overworld, every time he got like the, you know, the Triforce piece, they did that you know, the music that's supposed to be playing. So that was really cool to watch. And uh, he, he did it, like, in under an hour, which is kind of impressive. And the last group, they had other groups there, but the last group that I really, really, um, was I really wanted to see was the um, video game orchestra. And they played, like, uh, at the last bit of Saturday. And they were good, but they weren't really as good as, um, like, previous years. They played a lot of um, new songs. They only played about, like, three songs that were kind of replay- repeats. And that was um, a song from Final Fantasy VIII, um, a song from F-Zero, the Blue, Blue something, Blue Falcon. I think that's the song. And uh, Snake Eater. All the other songs were... Um, or brand new, and they played songs from like Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Unleashed, and the in the the crowd really didn't like the Sonic Unleashed song, which I kind of think they'll never sing that song again. <laughs> but uh, they played a lot of um, Super Mario Brothers songs, um, and what was the, oh Skyrim was the um, was the one of the songs really good, but like I said, not as good as last year or the any previous years. So. Um, I think that's kind of it. Um, I can't really think of anything else to say, and I don't really want to ramble on too long, so, I don't know, do you guys have any questions about PAX that I could answer for you? Well, I heard a couple of big announcements. One of them was that they're doing a PAX South now in San Antonio, which is pretty cool, because that's relatively close to me. I mean, like, I'm in between, so, like, I think the closest for me now would be PAX South and PAX Prime, just because... It's not that bad of a a flight out, and it shouldn't cost too much. But that's that's cool for everyone down south. I just like that they're kind of expanding and growing. And, and yeah. I also heard a new big announcement was from like a panel or something, but they announced Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. Yes, which, yes, which, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty fucking excited about because one, I love you know the Sid Meier's games, and like I grew up with Age of Empires and stuff like that. I love those kind of historic strategy games, but it's basically a Civ and Herb, or it's basically a spiritual successor to Alpha Centauri, if anyone remembers Alpha Centauri, which I love. But Alpha Centauri is basically Civ and kind of space, and it has, like, kind of historic interpretations on, like, sci-fi and all that, and it's really, really cool, so I'm pretty excited about that. 
So. Yeah, they actually announced like that Pack South during the the Make a Strip panel on Saturday, mm-hmm. which was like the crowd just went wild. So, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm excited about that Civ Earth game too. I like I love Civilization. I didn't play five, but four was amazing. Oh yeah, so. I love four. So, but um. But yeah, PAX was good. Those, like I said, mostly all the cosplayers there were like fucking fantastic. Mm. So, I don't know. But yeah, that's basically it for for PAX. Me, it was good. I met uh, Pete Dor. I kind of I kind of hung around him uh, most of the weekend. Uh, Tim Jumble Junkie was there. Um, let's see. I think Chrono Link from the Users Podcast was there. If I'm naming the wrong person. I apologize. Um, but yeah, he was there. And, a f- oh, Miss Ishbu was there too, but I did not actually see her. So she was dressed up as Storm, and I really wanted to meet her. You know, I figured she would be easy to find, but apparently she wasn't. So <laughs> A lot of people. <laughs> yeah, they, it was actually more crowded this year than previous years. It's like, usually Sunday is kind of like the dying down, like not as many people, but Sunday was like, fucking pack dude like what the hell yeah i can hardly move but um but yeah it was not as good as the previous years but pax east of this year was still enjoyable to me so that's good yeah I totally want to go to pax and now i have like two really good options now which makes me really excited yeah yeah, oh. they, do, they do four packs a year now with packs out. Yeah, and they just keep, like, expanding, which I think is great because, like, you hear all the people, like, man, I'd love to go to packs, but it's just not close to me and all that. So I love that they're just kind of branching out and trying to, you know, give options for, depending on where you're located in the U.S. Like, Techno, I feel like you should be able to go to Pack South. I mean, it's relatively oh, close. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. Arkansas to Texas, which shouldn't be too bad. It's, uh... Yeah. So, gentlemen, do you want to get into some news? Hmm? We sure do. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I'll go first, I guess. Please, you're Five. the best. Like we yeah. established <laughs> that you're the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, big band. Skurgles get uh, their first male character named Big Band, it's pretty much, it's like this big dude that, like, looks like he has a saxophone on his back, uh, it's weird. I like where that's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it's an anime fighter, so, or, I would consider it anime. Yeah, it's got uh, that kind of cartoony style. Yeah, and... You know, anime's pretty weird sometimes. Yes, um, it's like kind of, Yeah, it's kind of that's kind of an understatement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's a little weird sometimes. <laughs> just a little weird. Just a tiny just a little. Just a bit. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm guessing. Uh, we're gonna have to pay for them. I'm not for sure if it's gonna be like a free thing or not um because squiggly the um last character that was um announced and brought in you had to pay for that so but uh i have no problem paying for it i mean it's pretty cheap i forget it was like a dollar or something for squiggly I could be wrong, but I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for girl girls encore, big band joins the fight. Yeah, you see what I did there? Mm, clever. <laughs> <laughs> so how how come they're going with a male character? Uh, well, um, it was um. Big Band uh, was um, funded by Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it was one of the ones, like, they did, like, a thing where you pick what characters you would like to see in the game, and people chose Big Band. So, there you go. 
And yeah, he's the very first male. I would love to be that first male. Oh yeah, because he's got a saxophone. <laughs> I mean, I know, man. Like that saxophone is just man. <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, car car combat comes to PlayStation next week and cell damage HD. It releases. Uh, it released back on the original Xbox in two thousand one. Um, I believe that it was a launch game. I could be wrong, but I do think the Xbox came out in 2001, didn't it? I I don't remember. I don't know. So I think it did because the the GameCube came back and came out in 2001, just a few days after of the Xbox. So, yes, there you go. But um, Cell Damage re- will return on the PS4, PS3, and PS Vita on a- a- April 22nd as a cross-buy game that includes all three versions with a single purchase. That's freaking crazy. <laughs> I love cross-buy. Such a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Cell Damage HD boasts 13 maps and 6 playable characters, and the console versions will feature split-screen multiplayer. Uh, Cell Damage HD will premiere at $9.99 with 10% discount available for PlayStation Plus members, and that's me. <laughs> Just you. Uh- only Just him, because he Just is the me. best. Just he me. is the best. So he loves you so best. much. <laughs> uh, love you. Yeah. <laughs> that's so. That's so funny. <laughs> you gonna pick that up, Techno? Sell down. Yeah. I mean, ten percent discount from nine ninety nine. How can I pass it up? That's what they want you to think. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I've been saving money. Oh, good man. I'm proud good of you. man, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be buying a PS4. Excellent. Oh, I saw your... Oh! Did you have like a post or something that you're selling your PS3 also? To make I, um, I, I was thinking of it and then I was like, uh, yeah, uh, it's not backwards uh, compatible. You won't be able to play. It. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, that's kind of like a huge commitment if you sell your PS3. <laughs> yeah. I know, but man, I really want a PS4. But I've been saving up money from work, and so I should have enough money very, very soon. So I don't yeah. have to pretty much sell pretty much anything. That's good. Just a little bit. I don't know. Just so, sell me your Panzer Dragoon Saga, and we're good. Yeah, because I totally <laughs> own that game. I yeah. only have one and two. Whoa. Oh, I saw that you picked up two recently, which is cool. Yeah. Now you just need Saga. Yeah. You can send it to me. <laughs> nope. I'll give you $20. <laughs> you won't $20. get another offer like that ever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. I hope you get a PS4. Yeah, me too. What games are you going to buy if you get one? Infamous, n- number one. Uh, I don't know what else there is. <laughs> infamous, all the infamouses. Inf- all the infamouses. All of them. <laughs> Every single one of them. Yeah, I don't know what else there is. Like, I know... Um, There's that one game, Knack, which is exclusive. Yeah. Uh, 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 Try to think of exclusives. It's not a whole is lot. Is Titanfall on there? No. No, Titanfall no? Okay. is only on Xbox yeah. One, 360, which is freaking weird to me. I've heard like, that from people. It looks very, very similar. Like, it's hard for people to notice the difference. Yeah, it's but cool. also, it doesn't look that good good on Xbox One to begin with. Because yeah, a like, lot of people got game. it, and then they were like, eh. 
You know, I, and yes, I know. I'm not. I'm not a graphics whore, but I think those people are graphics whores. <laughs> I'm just gonna say well, that. They're a little spoiled by graphics. I wouldn't notice a difference between 720p and like whatever the hell it was, like 790p or something. I don't know. Yeah. I personally wouldn't notice a difference. Um. I don't, yeah. Well, yeah. What are is for the PS4? The only thing that's like coming to mind, like games that are like on multiple systems, like yeah, Lego Marvel and. Um, I don't know, Lego the movie or something. Yeah, that's why the only exclusive I can think of right now is Snack. I know they had, I don't know whatever happened at Drive Club and the other, the crew. I guess they're not out yet. I thought Drive Club, wait, I, I thought one of those was an Xbox exclusive. No, one of the, I oh. think the crew is like a multi-platform. Like it's going to be on PS4, oh, okay. Xbox and One, the, Drive Club. I think Drive Club is PS exclusive. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Here's here's a few PS4 games. You got Assassin's Creed Four, uh, Knack, like we already said, NBA 2K14, Battlefield Four, uh, the new Metal Gear Solid game. Don't you like oh, Metal yeah. Gear? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you can get that Metal Gear Solid game. Uh, Need for Speed Rivals, uh, Watch Dogs, which is not out yet. Uh, Thief, which is not out yet either. Wait a minute, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, Marvel Superheroes, Injustice. Uh, these are kind of games on uh, on all the other systems. Uh, Just Dance 14. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, see, <laughs> uh, Rayman Legends, Infamous, like you already said. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to go through the, all the whole list. Uh, let's see, Elder Scrolls Online, which comes out in June. NBA Live 14, The Last of Us Remastered. Um, that that was one because I never got. Yeah. If you haven't played that, that'd be a good one. Yeah, that would be a good one. Uh, let's see, Final Fantasy fourteen, The Realm Reborn Collector's Edition. Uh, let's see. Oh, they have an ad for the Wolfenstein game, which comes out in May. So you, I guess you could get that. Um, uh, Amazing Spider-Man two, UFC, uh, Shadows of Mordor. Oh, that comes out in October. Never mind. Um, yeah. So I guess that's it, really. Yeah. So. All about that Just Dance, man. That's why I, take, <laughs> yes. that's why I secretly buy it. I dance all day. Yeah, yeah I dance all day. I get for Just Dance 14. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You got Infamous and the Metal Gear game. There's two of them right there for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and The Last hey, of Us. Yeah, except for that Metal Gear game is a demo. You are a demo. <laughs> it's a two-hour demo. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I'm not bitching. I'm just saying. Yeah, if you're a Metal Gear fan, I'm sure you'll like it. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. I, I, no, let's get back to news. Alright. <laughs> Alright. So, um, a new Blood Rain is teased by a fighting game studio. And that fighting game studio is... I totally forgot the name of them. Arc oh System my Works. god. <laughs> it's Arc System Works. <laughs> Good job, Techno. You're the best. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I was like, best. it can't be Capcom. Oh, it's totally by Capcom. It's totally Capcom. <laughs> it's Data East. Data East it's is Data East. <laughs> yes, with the new blood rain. Oh, can't wait. But yes, uh, Arc System Works, best known for... Um, Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, and Persona Arena. Dude, I can't wait for that new Guilty Gear. Oh, so good. Uh, that's uh, that's another one coming for the PS4. Oh, really? Is it a downloadable yeah. or like an actual physical it's copy? It's an actual copy. Oh, that's cool. I like well, I believe it is. I mean, that would be cool. Why wouldn't it? I mean, it did it for. Plays blue in their physical copies. Yeah. Persona Arena. Cool. I believe it's a P. It's PS4 and PS3 exclusive too. Yeah, that game looks pretty cool. Yeah, but yeah, uh, they haven't. You know, haven't said anything yet about it. It's 
you can look at the site um, and what they're calling it is BRCS, which BNR stands for blood rain. I mean, how can you not get that? But uh, yeah, it just shows like a picture of blood rain and um, that's probably not her name. I totally forgot. <laughs> her I name don't know is her. Blood rain. Yeah, isn't yeah, her name? Her, isn't isn't her name Rain? I always thought her name was Rain. I thought that was her sword. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. I I'm just saying. I, I her played, name is I Blood. Played, I'll I, I'll look I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Okay, good. I I you know I just played the games. I didn't really like really get into the story. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the character's name is Rain. Okay. Oh, okay. See, yeah, there you go. Rain, Rain is looking for her father and kills any vampire that crosses her path. She's working for the Brimstone Society. That's her bio, according to Wikipedia. So, yeah. Rain. Yeah. Rain. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I guess I'll, I'll do this one as well. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the video game. Getting caught in PS3's bundles web. Whoa. Yeah. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> that is dangerous. <laughs> uh but yeah. Um the um it comes with a five hundred gigabyte PS3. Uh two hundred and seventy dollar package is available for pre order through Walmart and includes the Activision published game The Amazing Spider-Man 2 as well as the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. The bundle is available via the movie streaming on the surface Voodoo, which is weird. I really thought they would like put a Blu-ray in there. Yeah, it's that like, would be better. But Yeah, yeah. like uh, I've never used Voodoo. I just think putting a Blu-ray in there would be easier. So, yeah, there you go. That's fun, and... Mm -hmm. Well, I'll go next, since I have an amazing Spider-Man story. Whoa. Uh-oh. And... Uh -oh. Yeah, uh-oh, it's... <laughs> The, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's tragic. It's amazing. It's, <laughs> this is actually pretty tragic. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 will not be on the Xbox One as, on the same day as the other systems. Uh, the Amazing, Sp Amazing Spider-Man 2 publisher Activision has indefinitely delayed the game's Xbox One version for a few weeks from release. Activision has yet to fully explain the move. First noticed by... Gamers Honest Truth. Um, I'm not really sure what that mean that is. Maybe a website or a magazine, uh, which came to light after reports of that pre-orders for the Xbox One version of the game have been canceled by a Australian retailer, EB Games. But the issue doesn't appear to be limited to Australia. Neil Gaff noticed that all references of the Xbox One version have been quietly removed from games international uh, official sites. Uh, it's quoted, We want to inform that we are revisiting our release plans for The Amazing Spider-Man 2 on the Xbox One, as a spokesperson for the publisher uh, stated. Uh, also in quotes, he says, when and whether Amazing Spider-Man 2 is released for the Xbox One is yet to be determined. Uh, in the meantime, the game is due on time for the 3DS, PS4, PS3, the Wii U, and the Xbox 360. It's going to be released in the UK May 2nd. Uh, I'm not really sure of the United States release date, uh, but it's also been updated. The story has also been updated that Activision has yet to... Uh, Activision has confirmed that the postponement of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 for the Xbox One to Eurogamer but it is said that it will collaborate with Microsoft, in quotes, in an effort to release the title at some point. There's still no reason for the delay, and whether the game will actually release at all still 
seems in doubt. Uh, it's in quotes, we are working with Microsoft in an effort to release the Amazing Spider-Man 2 video game for the Xbox One, as Activision spokesperson states. So, I don't know, that's that's kind of weird. It's not coming to the Xbox One, or uh, at least not on the same day as all the other systems, which is really, really weird. Um... I would, if I had an Xbox One and I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, I would be kind of butt hurt, especially if I pre-ordered it. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, but I'm getting it on the 360 because I don't have an Xbox One, so thank God. So yeah, but yeah, they give no reason for the why it's not coming on the Xbox One or why it's being delayed. It's just delayed for some reason or. I don't know. It might get can be canceled altogether. Who knows? So, I don't know. It's weird. Like what? Like you guys have any idea? Like why it would be canceled or at least postponed? Um, maybe they're having problems for some reason with the Xbox One version. Oh, I w- I couldn't like think of what is what the problem would be. Yeah, neither, neither can a lot of people. <laughs> I don't know. I just find that really weird that it's not coming for the Xbox One. But I'm really grateful that I'm I'm not I didn't plan on getting it on the Xbox One. So But yeah, that's my only news story is sucks for Spidey fans on the Xbox One. Well, I got a couple quick news stories. Guys, do you love Call of Duty? Oh man, I know Shh, don't answer it. Hell you yeah, guys, I do. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are all about yes, Call of Duty. This is the this is the Call of Duty podcast. Oh, well, I'm glad. Uh, there you go. This is now officially the Call of Duty podcast. Guys, what did you feel about Call of Duty Big Red 1? I thought it was a great game. Big Red? Yeah, it was It was a pretty good game. Call of Duty 2 was pretty good, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Oh, but I have an announcement for some new Call of Duty DLC, and this is actually really awesome DLC, guys. So... <laughs> If you have Call of Duty Ghosts, you can look forward to a new voice pack for the multiplayer sessions, but not just any voice pack. That's Snoop Dogg. It's going to be Snoop Dogg's voice as a kind of narrator for the multiplayer game sessions. It's basically like him announcing all your kills and like what's going on and what weapons you pick up. He's got his kind of Snoop Dogg kind of touch in there. And it's just absolutely hilarious. You can watch a video where it has like it shows off the new narration for Call of Duty with Snoop Dogg, and it's just amazing. Like it's the best thing to happen in Call of Duty since like <laughs> Call of Duty. Are you yeah. serious? It's just his <laughs> voice. Doggy dog. <laughs> it's a voiceover. It's a voice pack. Narration. How much does it cost? I have no idea. It doesn't say. But I'm ass- I'm gonna assume like five bucks maybe because I thought that's, that's a good oh, number. <laughs> Comes out April twenty second on yeah, Xbox I- Live. I thought he changed his name to again. Snoop Lion. To Snoop. It was to be no, Snoop no, Lion. no. It was Snoop Lion, and then he changed to Snoopzilla. Yeah, what? that didn't last long. And now he's Snoop Dogg because you know there's dogs in Call of Duty Ghosts, and he fits perfectly. <laughs> Man. This sounds such like a wasteful DLC. <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, uh, we need more Call of Duty games with Snoop Dogg in it. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's no. the next big step. That's the next big step for Call of Duty. Dude, oh, no. Yeah. Ha- make the new, uh, you know, those uh, 50 Cent uh, games. Have him okay. as a character in it. I, I played 50 Cent Bulletproof. <laughs> 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 this show is terrible. <laughs> and then he has, like, another one that's called, like, 50 yeah. Cent Blood on the Sand or something. Yeah, something like that. It's a, wow. Video games, man. Video games and Snoop Dogs. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, th- I think that's a complete waste of DLC. Are you kidding me? It's Call of Duty. They do work. Yeah, but it's just his voice. That's so weird. Like, if he was a playable character... Oh, then, that, yeah, oh my be... God. That'd be even no, I, I'd put money down right now. I would play Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and throw him, like, Exhibit. And like it basically just because <laughs> Call of Duty Death Jam. Just Death every Mission. every character from Death Jam. Uh, phew, there we go. We just made the next <laughs> Call of Duty game. I'm so excited. It's coming to an. That's Xbox what they need PS4. to make is a new Death Jam. Oh well, I think there's licensing stuff. Yeah, probably. I think that's why. Like, I think there's a couple of them that like 
they can't sell anymore or something that disappeared. Icon sucked. Yeah. I don't know, I'm pretty excited about Call of Duty Def Jam. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's gonna be announced at E3. Def Jam edition. I'm so excited. Can't wait. Quality stuff. But, moving on to some other news. It's always sad when, you know, digital games get taken down. Like, what well, was it recently? It was like Outrun and like there's certain games that, you know, they're up there and then they get taken down for licensing agreements that they run out of the license or whatever. So another game is being taken down on April 30th, and that is Burger Time World Tour. This is a kind of remastering of the arcade classic Burger Time with tons of levels and a new style and HD and all that. But it's being taken down what, for what they say is licensing issues. Basically, I think Monkey Paws the developer, and they're saying that it's just their licensing is running out on it and they just can't sell it anymore, so they got to take it down. So if you want Burger Time World Tour, you got to act before April 30th. But the good news is that they're supposedly discounting it to $4.99 before it gets taken down on all platforms, which it's available on PC, Xbox 360, PS3, and the Wii as a downloadable title. So if you're interested in picking it up, do it soon because you won't have a chance after April 30th. I like Burger Time. It's a fun game. But guys, it's been a while since we had some Tales of news, and that makes me really sad. Oh, God, yeah, that's true. Because this is also not only the Call of Duty podcast, but the Tales of podcast, too. <laughs> so, guys, I'm so the tell Tales of uh, Duty. Tales of Calls. The <laughs> Calls of Dogs. Tales of Def Jam. No. But, oh, my God. <laughs> this is awesome to use. They've announced, Bandai Namco has announced in, like, a video kind of press conference thing that they do, that Tales of Hearts R will be coming to the West for the PS Vita. Tales of Hearts R is basically a remastered edition of the original Tales of Hearts, and Tales of Hearts came out on the original DS, so they remade it in Japan for the Vita with updated visuals and extra content, kind of similar to how they did like Tales of Graces F. So I'm super excited. I was talking to someone recently that was like, man, it'd be awesome to bring out like a Tales of game for the Vita. You know, because there's a couple. There's also Tales of Innocence R. That's also on the Vita, but nothing has been confirmed with that. But I'm just super happy to finally have a confirmed Tales of game on the Vita, so I cannot wait. I just It's great. So much more Tales of love. They're finally getting the hint that, hey, people actually like this series in the West, so maybe we should bring the games out, which makes me really happy. There's no confirmed release date. It's just like basically saying, like, yeah, it's coming out to the West. But that is all my news. I'm super excited, guys. I have one question about your Tales of game. Will, will there be a Snoop Dogg voiceover? <laughs> Up to Bandai Namco. Aww, I I really hope so. Yeah, the outcome does not look so good. All games need Snoop Dogg. We need like Snoop Dogg voiceover in Titanfall and like okay. everything. This has got to catch on. It's hilarious. But that's all. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. That's Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg means Pokemon, that would be hilarious. He should be like an Evo commentator. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. That's hilarious. But, um, one question. Uh, did they ever, like, re actually... Did the original, uh, Tales of Hearts, um, come over here on the original DS? No. Stayed in Japan. Oh. Both of them stayed in Japan. Oh. That's why this is a big deal. It's like the first time we'll be able to play it. All, actually, all the DS. There's a couple. There's like Tales of Hearts, Tales of Innocence, and Tales of the Tempest. There's like three DS Tales of games that stayed in Japan. That was back when they were like, oh, you know, we're not sure if the West really likes Tales of. And then they just completely 360 and they're like, oh, here's all the Tales of games, you know. Yeah. Super excited. That's why I'm super excited. It's like just to be able to play this game too. So I love it. That's all my news. I think that does it for our news. Yay. Yes. I'm eating a chocolate bunny. Whoa. Clive, that's Whoa. violent. Yeah. Peter, that, that's Peter getting a little listening. too violent on this Call of Duty podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We uh, we can you know we can shoot people, but we can't eat, eat chocolate bunnies. Yeah, it's dangerous. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but 
It, uh, Peter, I, I was, at your door. I was given a chocolate bunny today. And, Sir, and, put and, the bunny down. <laughs> uh, and it's so good. Well, the only part that's left is his butt and his, and his leg. Oh, my God, you already ate its head and everything. Oh, it's <laughs> terrifying. Dude, that's the first part you have to eat. Oh. R.I.P. Chocolate bunny. <laughs> Never forget. Sorry. We can have a moment of silence for the bunny if you like. <laughs> we just yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, guys, any questions? Nope, I don't think so. <laughs> no, we have no questions from listeners this We're week. We're done. That was the quick. We're done. No. Come on, Tech. So. I thought you were gonna get questions. Yeah. What the fuck? Or, like make up questions for us to answer. Yeah, make up a question. <laughs> it better be good. Okay. Just one chance. And, and do it. <laughs> And do it in a Snoop Dogg voice. Exactly. I can't do Snoop Dogg. What? You didn't even try. Because I don't remember what he sounds like. Oh, He's like, I, I, yeah, I can't exactly. do it. I can't do it. I can't do Good it. Job. That was the best impression. I, I forget this. what he. I forget his little saying. Here's a question. Yeah. Come on, Techno. I believe in you. He can do it. Okay. Put your heart in the cards. All what, the hearts. What, what's yes. in my uh, Dreamcast right now? Ooh, oh, I don't care. This could be a couple of things. It yeah. could be what it, else. Like. I, I'll, I'll give you guys a hint. Is it the web browser? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was it, so close. It's not, it's not a web browser. It's not an online game. And it's not a Sonic game. And it's not a Dreamcast game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is a Dreamcast game. It, uh, okay. It is was it also picked up recently, like some No, no, oh, no. Damn. Uh it was also uh released again on the PS2. Hmm. Okay, this could be a couple okay. things. I feel like you've been playing Skies of Arcade. Wait, no. No, I'm mm, thinking no. GameCube. Wait, PS2. I was Oh, oh Grandia. Is it Grandia too? Damn, okay. yes. I'm the best. Well, that wasn't very I don't fun. <laughs> what, because you didn't win? No, because you gave it away. I didn't give it away. Yeah, you you passed notes underneath the table. No. Yeah. It's a very, very long table that stretches from Arkansas to Arizona. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It's like one of the ape wonders in the room. <laughs> Well, that's oh, not fun. I was totally thinking web browser. Or dr- totally dream passport. <laughs> that only happens whenever my computer fails. <laughs> Gotta boot up the old web browser. Could you imagine if that like that still worked? Like seriously. It it does. Does it really? Yeah. I can't imagine, but it could but if you're saying so, then sweet. I've used it before. <laughs> Because, like, um, a while back, back when, like, 12th grade, I had a crappier PC, more crappier than this one. And it, like, just, you know, shut down on me. So I had to use the old Dreamcast on dial-up. Quality (laughs) so It sucked. Oh, it's hilarious. What did I win? What's my prize? Yeah, what's Copy the prize? Copy Panzer Dragoon Saga. Thank you, Techno. I love you. My, no, no. I'll take you Panzer Dragoon too. You get, you get this <laughs> paper plate that I just uh, ate off of, but it, it has it, it has a ketchup on it, so. This is better than The Price is Right. <laughs> uh, thank you, you Techno. Need, you didn't yeah. even have to answer in the form of a question either. No. Make sure that's you package not, it well. Not, that's not how presses right, you know. I know. I was trying to refer to another game show. Well, I don't like that game show. Oh, well, what do, well, what do you have against Alex Trebek? Yeah. No, what the fuck, dude? Dude's He's like, too smart. He's too smart. <laughs> Do you know? He just like asks the questions. He doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know the answer. He probably doesn't know jack shit about half of the questions. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, he just, doesn't he just read off the screen? Yeah, yeah it's like a teleprompter yeah. or something. Oh, okay. He has no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he does. He does know the answer because it's on that little card. <laughs> now, That's as, smart, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, he's cheating at his own uh, game show. He's so smart that he has the ability to read the cards. <laughs> <laughs> he has the heart of the cards. Uh so I'm looking forward to that paper plate. Just package it really well. Okay. <laughs> make, make sure the oh, make sure the ketchup is still there. Yeah. Okay. Can't wait. It's pretty dry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> dry ketchup. It's the best. But techno. Do you have any love talk for us? I know you've been thinking for like ever. And I know you've been prepping for this day. Yeah. <laughs> to give I think advice. I'm not. <laughs> Make it super sexy. To give advice to all our, you know, listeners. Okay. That's pretty well, the advice. Oh, man. A- ask me a, uh, like, if you, you're ha Dan, I know you're having trouble in your love. <laughs> so, Yours. you yeah. need He's to true. ask me what your problem is. Well, you see, she just. Oh, they should be good. She doesn't like RPGs, which makes me really she sad. She doesn't like RPGs, okay. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I know you're like a love expert and an RPG expert, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the best, biased. man. This yeah. is gonna turn out so bad. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's what you need to do. Okay, do you really like this girl? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, like, you wouldn't, like, give her up for no one else. No. No. Maybe okay. Maybe your pets are doing a cycle, but no. <laughs> okay. No. I was going to say just leave her, but... <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> Go play but, you, you like her, so, I would say, put, just, make her play Pokemon, and then... Make her play, and also you have to make her choose Charmander. It's well, like, yeah, that's a given. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, mean, I, if she I thought Charmander—that's like a deal breaker right there. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like people really disappointed. I like Bulbasaur. No, you're out. But no. <laughs> and then make her play Super Mario RPG. I got that. I can do that. Okay, good. And then you, you just you just like level up, you know. Level up the RPG. difficulty. Of the RPG. Yeah, yeah, and then like then finally lunar, and oh, then so good. <laughs> yeah, and then and then nights in the nightmare on the DS, right? That's how I do it. Oh yes, always, <laughs> always. That that is always last. <laughs> That's like one of the most convoluted RPGs. With one of the most convoluted system. Man, I tried that, and I was like, no. I loved it. I got so into it. I got so good at it. <laughs> it was like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but things are happening. <laughs> uh, and then Hazard Dragoon Saga, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, and the, Panther and the, Dragon Saga is not really that hard. You just... I mean... It's pretty short, too. Yeah. And then Quest 64. I, I don't know about short, though. <laughs> Quest 64, you can just leave that. Oh. That's, yeah. That was horrible, just like the system it's on. <laughs> oh! oh! what? <sighs> what? What? That was like a huge slap in the face to a and lot then, of people. And then Double Dungeons, right? On the Turbo <laughs> Graphics? Double Dungeons. Oh, yeah. You have to play... Th- <laughs> that is... Yeah, that's actually the first one. The okay. first game she actually... <laughs> Here, try double touching. <laughs> and if if she can, like, I don't know. If she can stand it, then she has she's a, a keeper. Tolerance. Yes, she's a keeper. And then Ultima 4 on DOS. <laughs> Do you even have DOS, a DOS computer? Dude, I played Ultima 4 like a year ago. I loved it. Oh. Oh, you have DOS box. I have DOS box. Yeah, DOS box. So, it's good stuff. Yeah. 
Then where does like Final Fantasy thirteen go in there? I'm a 13. little lost. <laughs> no, put in nine. Okay. Nine. Yeah. Screw okay. thirteen. Okay, that's good to know, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What about Grandia two? I have Grandia two. Grandia two, I dude. I I'm loving Grandia two, man. Um. I, w- I was kind of stuck because I didn't really understand how to move match. around. <laughs> no, like the, well, About that, the yeah. <laughs> no, the uh, magic, like how to power up your characters and stuff. And then I found out, and I was like, oh. And then I, like, I was stuck on the, uh, that lion thing. I don't know if you played it. Grandia it's been a while. Did. Yeah, really go that far. It, not that far. Fu- what? So you didn't beat it? No, I got distracted by other RPGs. Oh, well, <laughs> which happens? We. Uh, I think I think uh, he's a lion, or like a lion man type thing. I I could be totally wrong, and you know it's just the graphics kind of screwing me up. You know, since it's uh, not HD. But, I love that game. It's very, very fun. It's a quality game. Yeah. But the big question is, where does Tales of Asperia fall into that mix? Like, is that the last game she plays? or Tales of Asperia? Oh, my God. Ooh. It's a tough one. Yeah. You can make that decision on that game. Okay. So it's the first game she plays. <laughs> yes. And then double dungeons after. I got this all planned out. Thank you so much, Techno. You're a big help. <laughs> She's going to love RPGs so much. <laughs> Techno's so great, guys. If you ever have questions for Techno or any love questions, you need some love advice. Please send them to Techno. He'll be more than happy to help you. <laughs> right, Techno? Yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. So, guys. And it's girls. Time. It's that time to talk about the electronic games that we have been playing <laughs> quite, quite recently. I like how you kind of said that all, like, dramatic, like, like, dun-dun-dun. I've been playing Double Dungeons, though. <laughs> Have you? That's amazing. I don't, I don't want to torture myself. No. Techno, what have you been playing? You're the best, so you got to go first. You're the okay. best. Okay. It's better be the best games. Yeah. Okay. Disappointing. Grandia 2. Okay. Grandia 2. That's okay. good. Um, Legend of Zelda. Ordering of time. Okay. Uh, Been good so far. Don't uh, drop the ball. I, 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 I already dropped the ball with that game. Um, Panzer Dragoon. Zwei. Uh, good stuff. <laughs> and uh, some um, X-Men vs. Street Fighter. I freaking love that game. And Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, the sequel. And, um, um, let's see here. Let's see here. Hmm. I don't think I ever... I didn't... Oh, well, I played a little bit of, um... Castlevania Chronicles on the PS3. It's the PS1 version, and, uh, or, well, the PSN, where you download it, whatever. Yeah, it's hard. Very hard. I can't get past level two. (laughs) It makes me sad. But, I believe that is it. Wow. Wow. (laughs) I like what we had to post response like yeah. I was expecting like another five hours <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Dan, what have you been playing? <sighs> Pokemans. Yay! You know, the, the, the game where you, like, battle creatures and stuff like that. <laughs> been playing more Pokemon X, guys, and I like Pokemon X. Uh, I like Pokemon. I got my seventh badge, so... And I'm, I'm at, like, the Team Flare head, headquarters right now. That's where I left off. I basically have the same team. I don't think I changed my team from the last time we talked. Although I've been trying to go on that global trading system to find Pokemon. Like, I tried to find, like, a Meowth and, like, a Hitmochan and, like, a Kabutops and a Dragonite. And I don't really like anyone on there because they're all kind of a-holes and they're all asking for, like, legendary Pokemon. And I'm like, wow, you people are greedy. It's like, it's just a Meowth and you want, like, Deoxys or something. It's like... Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> stupid, yeah. It's like, get real. Like, I don't even like Legendaries that much either. That's why I'm, like, trying to find, like, oh, I'd rather have a Dragonite or something. Like, it'd be so badass to have a Dragonite. Or a Hitmochan, but nope. So, guys, if you want to trade me a Dragonite, I'd like that. I really, really want a Dragonite. Yeah, that, have you done any global trading system, Clive? Have you had, like, success with that? Um, yeah, I think I've gotten two of them. One, I got, um, I always, I, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. It's the... A a Amapose, it's the lightning... Yeah, Amapose or whatever. Amapose, yeah, it's the lightning Pokemon, and I wanted him because he was going to basically be my Mega on the team, and um, I didn't have him, I, I don't think he's in the game, I, like, I don't think you can catch the catch him in the game, so I had to, like, transfer him over from another system, which I didn't have, or get the global trading, which I did end up doing, so I think I got him, and I think I got, like, a, like a Squirtle. Or something, because I didn't have a... I had a Bulbasaur and I had a Charmander, yeah. which I got from Holly. So I, I was needed, looking for a Squirtle, too. Yeah, so I needed a Squirtle. But yeah, I totally know what you're, you're talking about. Like, like I looked up, like, a... I think I looked up Squirtle and someone wanted, like, a... Like a 100... Like a level 100. Yeah, meter. that, too. Like, they all want, like, level 90 or higher or something. It's like... Get and I'm, dude, like... I'm like, dude, come on. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, let's be a little barrier. Like, something that makes sense. And, uh, like, a lot of Pokemon that people, like, wanting is uh, Rayquaza, which is kind of understandable since Rayquaza is from the Ruby and Sapphire games, and they haven't remade those. But I'm just like, how the fuck are you supposed to get Rayquaza? Yeah. You know, it's just like, without, like, you know, a cheat device, like, action replay. So I'm just like... But, yeah, I totally understand what, you, what you're talking about when people are just like, oh, I want to fucking lose, yeah. Yeah, Whatever. Give me Keldeo or Deoxys or Xerneas. <laughs> it's like, okay, really? It's just a meow. I want a meow so I can have a Persian. It's it's so fun. I don't know if I ever told you guys this story before, but I think they when they introduced the global trading system, I think it was in Diamond and Pearl. And I remember, like, people wanted these, like, um, like Pokemon, like, fully evolved Pokemon. Uh, let's just say... I'm just, I don't know, I'm just going to use this for an example, like, someone wanted, like, a Blastoise, but they wanted it, like, level 10. Yeah, and it's like, well, okay, how is that and, possible? Yeah, you know what, you, that you can, yeah, there's no way you can get, a, like, a level 10 Blastoise, because uh, War Turtle evolves into Blastoise at, like, level 32 or 33 or something like that. So what I this is so funny what I used to do right is I purposely go in the global chat or trading system and just look up random crap and just see what people people wanted and I had an action replay at the time <laughs> so I used to oh find out what people like wanted so I would I would use the the thing to catch like the level to, uh, the Blastoise and it would always appear in the level that you would you know, in the area you would catch it. So I always go to the, the very beginning of the game, and, you know, the Pokemon are, like, level 5, level 6, level 2, and I would catch a level 2 Blastoise, and I would trade, I would trade whoever has the, the Pokemon I wanted, and they would get my level 2 Blastoise. I'm like, oh, there you go. <laughs> you got what you asked for. <laughs> yeah, you got what you asked for. I, like, I always wanted to imagine, like, when they sign back on to the global system, it's like, and they get the level 2 Blastoise, they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? Someone actually had one. Yeah, I used to do that all the time, and it was, like, hilarious. Yeah, it's funny. I'll search, like, random Pokemon, too, just to see what people are asking for. <laughs> it's just so curious. 
It's ridiculous. Well, you know what? Like what I wanted to do at one, uh, like every time a new Pokemon game come out, I always wanted to do this, but like I just, it's so time consuming, and I always just wanted like a team of uh, Pokemon with all Japanese names, right? Mm. And like, and I don't think you can give them Japanese names on the American title. So like, I would have to do the global trading system to get all the the Pokemon I want. So that means I would have to do... I usually do my research right away, like, to find out what I want on my team, but, like, I would have to, like, okay, so I need him, but I have to, like, get him through global trading system from someone from Japan, and it's like, oh, that's so... uh, It's just so much work, so I just... I never end up doing it, but I would love to have, like, an all-Japanese team. So... Yeah, that's cool. One yeah. of my goals was to have an all dragon team, which I was looking for like Dragonite and Flygon, Altaria. It's like, you know, it's sad. Like even just trying to find like, oh, I'm trying to be smart and be like, oh, I could just level up a Dragonite. So like, what if I get a Dratini or, you know, Dragonair? But even then, it's like people still want like the same Pokemon. It's like, man. Uh. You know what? Um, you know, after the podcast, I'll go into my game. I think I have like a Dratini or a Dragonite. That I'll just give you. That'll I think. Awesome. All right. Well, after the podcast, I'll check. Yes. <laughs> like, Dragonite's one of my, like, you know how we probably all have, like, our Pokemon we really want. Like, Dragonite is really what I want. But I've been playing that. But I need to get back into playing some more Pokemon X and going through that. But this is a new one. This came out, like, Tuesday by Atlas. And this was a really weird RPG. And I'm starting to get addicted to it. But that is Conception 2, Children of the Seven Stars. Uh, every time I say that, I just can't help but think of Super Mario RPG. <laughs> it's like Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. But this was like one of those weird games that Alice announced. And the original Conception came out on the PSP in Japan. And then Conception 2 in Japan came out on the PS Vita and 3DS. So Alice brought it out here. Came out a couple of days ago for the PS Vita and 3DS. They did like a, if you pre-ordered it, you got a soundtrack. But Conception 2, best way to put it is, it takes a lot of inspiration from like Shin Megami Tensei Persona, Persona 3, Persona 4. And it's basically a half social sim slash dating game and half dungeon crawler turn-based RPG. And it's this really weird balance. But basically it's like this concept that there's like, this world and there's like these evil nest things that like spawn monsters and they're basically labyrinths so like it's a dungeon crawler they're labyrinths that you can go into and it, you've been recruited along with some of these other girls to go into these dungeons and exterminate the bosses to kind of you know destroy those nests but the key thing is like they, they call you like God's gift so like you have insane amount of power and part of the premise is that since you are God's gift you had to make what they call star children, which is almost like, I guess, the equivalent to having, like, personas or something, but it's, like, these children that you make make with these girls by this process called school mating, where, hence the social aspect... Oh, yeah! Hence the social <laughs> aspect, you talk to these girls, and you can give them gifts, and you just... There's actually... I'm actually impressed with the social sim part. Like, even though some of the dialogue does repeat between the girls, like, it kind of follows a day path kind of thing. But you, there's a lot of interesting dialogue, and all the girls actually have, like, their own unique story to them, but it's not given right away. You have to earn it by, like, talking to them and building up their bonds. But basically, to get stronger star children, you have to get closer with the girls and get to know them. But you take them to the church and schoolmate with them and make children. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's really weird because it's, like, you know, like, they... It's completely random if it's a boy or a girl, and then, like, when you do make them, you can choose between, like, classes. So there's, like, a, a magician or a cleric, you know, sword person, archer, so you get to choose a class. And basically how it works is, like, you have a party of four, and one of the party slots is you and one of the girls that you choose to take with you, because you can change which girl you want to take with you into the dungeons. And the other three party slots are filled by teams of three. So you have up, upwards of nine children on the field. So it's just like you and like this girl, like a bunch of children running around. And it's quite, it's, it's a strange, strange RPG. 
I didn't know it was actually made by Spike Chunsoft, which are the people who made 999 and Rampa Trigger Happy Havoc. So the music is really good. Like, it's some of the catchiest, upbeat, upbeat, cheery kind of music I've heard in RPG in a long time. And it's, it's actually really good. I'm just starting to get addicted to it. It kind of reminds me of how I got addicted to, like, that social sim RPG aspect with, like, the Persona games and stuff like that. But you just... As you get closer with these girls, that means you can make, like, stronger star children. There's, like, this concept where you can give the kids, like, independence, and they'll go into the city and upgrade the facilities and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff to it. So it's a really in-depth kind of RPG. So I don't know. It's really strange. If you like really, really, really odd and strange RPGs, this might be up your alley. So definitely not for everyone, but for people who love some kind of oddball RPGs, this, this is good. And the... Battle system is turn-based, but it has this weird thing where, like, it's directional, so, like, you'll fight a monster, and you can move, like, either behind it, to the side of it, to the other side of it, or to in front of it, and it just kind of works like that, which is kind of interesting. It's, I would say it's pretty easy so far. It's kind of on the easy so easy side so far, but I think it's just a matter of time before it gets, like, excruciatingly hard or something. But I'm loving that. I think I put in, like, 8, 10 hours already, so... I'm really enjoying that. And I picked this game up. It's a downloadable game I've been wanting because Sony had, like, a, a flash sell, like a crazy flash sell where they had, like, various games for, like, a dollar. And one of them, guys, well, it's you know, it's pointless because it's only up for, like, the weekend, so by the time this goes up, you won't hear it. But they had Tokyo Jungle for a dollar. And I'm like, man, if, <laughs> really? if, you, if you guys did have Tokyo Jungle, you should buy it for a dollar because it's, like, the best thing ever. But I picked up, like... Super Stardust HD for the PS3 Retrograde, which is like this music rhythm shooter. I picked up Everyday Shooter, which is like this, kind of reminds me of Robotron 2084. And I picked up Tales of Monkey Island, the complete five-episode collection. But this is the one I've been playing recently, and that's Retro City Rampage. And I really, really wanted this, and it was a dollar, like all these other games. So It's also cross-buy, too, which is awesome, so PS3, PS Vita. So I've been playing it on the Vita, and it's basically like old school Grand Theft Auto with tons of homages and references and fan service to old classic video games and classic movies. Like, geez, there were like a dozen references within like the first minute of the, <laughs> minute of the game or something. It's super crazy, but it's kind of like the old school Grand Theft Autos where you can do like missions. I think the premise is like you have to you have the choice to do like work in the city and do jobs. Or you can talk to the doc and try and... Because you, like, time-traveled to another, <laughs> like, time and then you're trying to get the, you know, the flux capacitor and all these other <laughs> items to travel back into the regular time that you came from. But it has tons of, like... Like old Grand Theft Autos, it kind of has its equivalents to, like, Kill Frenzy and stuff like this. But it's super pixelated. It's pretty cool because there's, like, an options menu. And in the options, you could change the style of it. So you can have it look like an arcade cabinet or that's like on an old CRT TV. You can change like the color schemes to make it look like it's like all black and red, like the Virtual Boy or something. Like It's pretty cool, pretty in-depth, and it's just a lot of fun with some really fantastic music. So if you like, if you're a big fan of the kind of old-school top-down Grand Theft Autos, this is totally worth checking out. Just a lot of, you know, chaotic fun. So I like that, and that's Retro City Rampage. And that's all the games I've been playing, so... Clive, what have you been playing? Um, okay, well, see, besides all the games I mentioned from PAX, uh, I played, um, some Halo 4 with a buddy of mine, just doing the, the multiplayer online thing. Um, it's been a while since I played Halo 4 for a long time, and I'm surprised I wasn't that bad. I was actually doing really good online, so I was kind of happy about that. Uh, and also I played some more, um, Super Street Fighter 4, um, because I just came back from PAX and I saw all the Ultra Street Fighter 4, it got me kind of hyped, so I've been playing some Super Street Fighter 4 with a friend of mine, and, um, uh, same thing, just battling online, nothing too special about that. Um, but one game I have been playing for the last uh, week was um, Bioshock Infinite. Uh, I borrowed this from a friend of mine, and i got to say, this is probably the, out of the three games, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and the Infinite, this is the best one. 
and that's probably not surprising. Uh, I just enjoy the story a lot. Um, I actually understood the story. Uh, one and two, I kind of vaguely just understood the story. I kind of knew the, the basic premise of it. Uh, but this one, yeah, I enjoyed the story for about halfway through the game, and then after that, um, kind of got a little confusing. I, and I will admit I had to go to Wikipedia just to kind of read the last half of the story because it gets a little confusing but from what I read um, I did enjoy it um, gameplay is the same you know just just like other Bioshock games you have your your plasmids but in this one they're called um, Vigors in this one I don't know why they changed the name of them but um, they they pretty much act the same you have a like a lightning bolt one you have one that can shoot out uh, crows that kind of eat your enemies. You have one, which I really kind of liked, was uh, the ability to like possess uh, different machinery or other enemies, and they fight for you. That one I kind of liked a lot. Um, they had like a uh, a water one where you could like launch enemies uh, in the background. So I kind of enjoyed that. Um, the The only thing I kind of found in this game that was just kind of like it wasn't bad, but it was just kind of like do you really, really need that? And um, at the beginning of the game, uh, you don't really need it at all. Is uh, Elizabeth, the girl that you kind of walk around with, um, she she would, like, randomly uh, give you, like, health packs, money, and um, salt. Uh, salt is what you use to, uh, to use the vigors. And she would just, like, randomly give you the these things like like every time I like I went into like a store to like buy things and immediately I leave the store she would like throw me a coin I'm like well why don't you throw the, me the coin before I go to the store um, but yeah she would just like throw random things to me which I find kind of like cheating in the game but near the, like the very end of the game I was like oh my god will you just throw me a health pack I'm dying what the fuck and um, so like she would just, like, randomly throw you these things, so I don't know what triggers it or why she does it. She just does it. Um, the character Elizabeth herself, I actually really did like. Uh, I don't want to give away... It's, well, it's, it's kind of an old game at this point, isn't it? Um, basically, how like the story goes is you kind of like have to rescue her, and you're using her to pay off a debt. Um, that you have in your, your like your ordinary life, and from there it gets to these crazy scenarios. And she has like the ability to open these, um, they call them tears, and they basically they're like doorways to alternate uh, dimensions of from your dimension or your universe. So like, <clears throat> for an example, like in your universe, um, someone might have been dead or killed. But then you can go to it like another universe, and that person will be alive. Uh, that's probably the best way to, to describe the different dimensions. So, uh, like I said, the, because of that, the story does get kind of confusing, and you, and I did have to go to Wikipedia to kind of read up the, on the story. But I enjoyed it for what it was. It was really good, really had to expressly near the end of the game, and it's probably out of the three my favorite of the Bioshock games. Uh, I did not play the the burial at C DLC because I, this one I just borrowed, and I didn't really want to pay for DLC that I don't own the game for. So I just played the main uh, the main game. So, um, and that's about it. Oh no 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 no! I've been playing tons and tons of Pac Man. Um, just me like sitting around playing. Pac-Man, you know, when I have free time, just charging my DSs and stuff, and I actually beat my high score um, of 29,000 in Pac-Man, so right now, it's not much, but my, now my new high score is 30,360, and I'm like, and they're like, that probably doesn't seem like a lot of, like, a high score, but, like, that literally took me almost, like, three hours to, like, get just playing, like, constantly. And I was like, fuck, yeah, I almost yeah. jumped. It's I almost... always a good feeling to beat your high score. Yeah. Even I if like... it's by a little or a lot. It's like, yes, yeah, I beat my high score. Because, like, you know what happened? Because, like, I was, I saw the high score, and I was just like, oh, my God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then my hands started cramping up because the ghosts were just, like, following me. They were to being total assholes and just getting near me. And uh, I was just, my my thumb was just moving on its own. I was just like, I don't even know what's going on. I'm just moving. And 
I just looked up. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. I literally jumped up and just screamed. I'm like, yeah. Everyone thought I was crazy. But I was super happy. I really was. Uh, I need to get back so. to challenging myself with some joust. From this yeah, joust. Yeah. yeah, man. It's like, ah, oh, just... Those old high score games, like, sometimes they're just so fun to fucking play, and I totally forgot how Pac-Man, like, how much I loved Pac-Man until I just sat down, I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna play a little Pac-Man, and, like, a five-minute game turned into, like, a half hour to an hour to, like, two, then three hours, like I said, I was like, yeah, I beat my high score, so, yeah, I've been playing tons and tons of fucking Pac-Man, dude, so, um, and that's about it, really, so, it's just... Uh, Bioshock, Pac-Man, and just whatever I played at Pac. So, so guys, what do you say? You want to wrap it up? No, no one wants to wrap it up. Though. No, we want it. No. We just want to keep going. They all love you too much. Techno's like, I want to give you guys some more love advice. <laughs> uh, no, but that's that's it, guys. That's episode ninety-two. 92. I almost said 32, but yeah, that's episode... <laughs> it's a little off. <laughs> yeah, a little off. But yeah, that is episode 92 of the Press Start Podcast. We want to thank everyone for listening, and we'll catch you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.